Hey guys, happy homebrew Wednesday. I got a lot of stuff to cover this week, so I wrote down notes so I don't forget anything. But before we get to that, I'm going to try a local craft beer. Uh, this one is made by Weyerbacher. It's called Verboten, and it's a Belgian-style pale ale. Now, Weyerbacher is a brewing company. is located in eastern Pennsylvania which uh, coincidentally is only a 20 minute trip down the uh, local freeway for me. Sorry the lighting in here kind of sucks right now guys. I've only got one light instead of two, but that's what it looks like. do this beer in a uh, review, but it's homebrew Wednesday. I'm thirsty. Oh, smells pretty good. Pale ales have become a uh, recent favorite style of mine. Now, it's been my experience with most Belgian style ales that they are bottle conditioned. And this one is bottle conditioned. <clears throat> I don't know why it doesn't note on the, uh, the bottle that it's bottle conditioned, but it is, but have no fear. I don't have any inclination to uh, harvest the yeast out of this bottle because I don't know what kind of yeast it is. Okay, uh, the beer's now well, cloudy, but that's all right. I'm guessing most Belgian beers are. Okay, not a whole lot of head, but it wasn't a very aggressive pour. Yeah, I can smell hops. Like, slightly spicy earthy, piney. So, cheers guys. Hmm. <clears throat> That's odd. That's almost sweet. It's a whole lot of malt flavor. And even though you can smell the hops, you really can't taste them. So, I don't know, I'm up in the air on this one, guys. <clears throat> Hell, maybe it's just a beer that has to grow on me. We'll set that aside for now. Okay, I've had a, uh, a busy week. <clears throat> if anybody's been following my channels, have seen my last two beer reviews, you know that I've uh, recently received some uh, beer mail from Brandon at Turtle Feather Brewing up in uh, Ontario, Canada and uh, I've returned the favor. And in fact, they are scheduled to be at your door by end of business day on Wednesday. So hopefully you'll be able to enjoy one of the beers I sent you while you're watching this video and thank you very much. <clears throat> um, the brown sugar maple syrup uh, beer um, that I said last week that I was gonna, I was gonna try. I decided to do a, an, an experimental one-gallon batch uh, size. One because I don't know how it's gonna turn out, and two because I have two kegs and I got rid of all my bottles, so I really don't have anything to put it in unless I go out and, and I, I buy cases. And I was actually gonna uh, pick up a case or two of those uh, plastic PET bottles. But only if the uh, the one gallon batch turns out good. Now my recipe for this batch, I use 10 ounces of amber dry malt extract. I used one half cup of dark brown sugar, and I used four fluid ounces of grade A amber maple syrup. For the 60 minute boil, I used a quarter ounce of autonom hops at 60 minutes 
and a quarter ounce of fuggle hops at five minutes. And after I threw them in, I was kind of debating whether or not the, those, uh, those finishing hops would um, you know, offset the flavor of the maple syrup and the, uh, the brown sugars. So, like I said, it's only a gallon batch. Um, it's been fermenting for about six days. I'm going to leave it for 14 days. Uh, put it in a, and scavenge up uh, the few empty bottles that I have. I'll, um, I'll bottle prime them and I'll, I'll set them aside till Christmas to see how that turns out. Uh, <clears throat> another thing that I did yesterday, I brewed my all grain Sierra Nevada Pale Ale clone. And the recipe I used for that, and this is right off of uh, Brewer's Friend, uh, that I don't use uh, Beer Smith, Brewer's Friend is free of charge. Um, it's 9 pounds of American 2 row, 14 and a half ounces of Crystal 60. I used 1 ounce of Centennial hops at the 60 minute mark. I used a half ounce of Pearl hops at 30 minutes. Now the recipe calls for an ounce of Cascades at 5 minutes and an ounce of Cascade hops at flame out. I substituted a tonum for it. Um, two reasons. I have a pound of autonom hops in uh, the freezer and autonom hops are a substitute for Cascade. Um, they're similar but they don't have the overpowering uh, um, citrusy um, grapefruity taste uh, and that suits me just fine. Now I'm really excited about this batch as opposed to my last batch, the, the one with the, uh, the horrible efficiency because my target starting gravity was 1051 and I hit 1050. Um, so I mean that makes me really happy. I think the, the, the way I was able to hit the mark was I changed my uh, sparge techniques. Um, traditionally I have done um, fly sparge uh, with a colander and took about an hour to drain the total volume of wort out of my mash tun, um, keeping the water level an inch, inch and a half over the grain bed. <clears throat> this time I just decided to do a batch sparge. I ran all of the all the wort out of the mash tun as a, a first running and uh, my strike water volume for the mash was two and a half gallons. I heated up three and a half gallons of sparge water to a hundred and, well, by the time I got it off the stove it was 172 degrees. And all I did was I just dumped that back into the uh, the mash tun. I gave it a really good stir. Like, I, I stirred the shit out of it, guys, for like five minutes. And then I, I re warloft and when it ran clear, I drained that out into the, uh, the bucket as well. It took 45 minutes for the first two and a half gallons. Um, to empty out of the mash tun. It took an hour for the uh, sparge water to empty out of the mash tun. And I don't have a uh, I don't have a wart chiller, guys, uh, because I'm a cheap uh, tight bugger, and I never really saw the need to uh, to make one or to buy one. So all of my all grains are no chill. And I mean, which is fine because this time of the year, last night it was 34 degrees outside. So what I did was I put the uh, the cover on the uh, my brew pot. I let it sit outside for three hours to cool down a little bit. I dumped it into my mash tun, but I stole a little bit of the wort to make a yeast starter with the uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale's own yeast, and I just pitched that in this morning. The temperature of the wart was 65 degrees, and the uh, temperature of my starter was 68 degrees. So we'll find out if the, the yeast works tomorrow or not. And, well, if it doesn't work, guys, I've got US05. I'll just pitch that in. Now, I do have to say the one thing. The, uh, the wart came out really, really dark. Um, darker than I remember the uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale uh, beer itself being. But when that's done fermenting, I'm going to rack it into a secondary. I'll let that sit for a week or two. Maybe I'll dry hop it. I will take uh, Tony Yates' advice and I will cold crash it. 
uh, when I put it in the, uh, the keg, I will carve it under 15 PSI. Uh, and I'll just, you know, set the gas on it and leave it for four or five days to uh, the carb up. And I will get some more Sierra Nevada uh, Pale Ale uh, bottles and I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison and taste test. Uh, you know, just so you guys can see, well, I can see too, whether the recipe I picked actually matches the, uh, the beer I'm trying to go for. But, I mean, that's, uh, that's basically all I have, uh, you know, going on this week, guys. I know it sounded like a lot, and when I was writing it down, it looked like a lot, but apparently it didn't take very long to, uh, you know, to tell you guys. I, oh, I've noticed uh, a lot of guys have been making, um, like, fruit-flavored uh, ciders with those, uh, like the, the cherry and the, the strawberry flavored syrups. So, as soon as I get my one gallon Demijohn back from the uh, brown sugar maple syrup experimental uh, batch, I will throw on a gallon of uh, blueberry flavored apple cider. And I'll scrounge up bottles to put those in, and naturally carbonate that too. I'll do a taste test for you guys whenever that gets done. But, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a short one this week, guys. So, as usual, I hope your week this far has been good. I hope the rest of your week is even better. Take care of yourselves. Cheers. 17.